welcome to the September 2024 OSBA Forum. I'm Kathy McFarland with Mark Bobo, and we are excited to connect with educational leaders from throughout Ohio and bring these conversations to our members. Kathy, today we're excited to have Reem Alley with us. She's the executive director of the Ohio School-Based Health Alliance, and she's here today to share with us how we can address the overall health and wellness of our students. Reem, thank you so much for being here today. Glad to have you. Please tell us more about yourself and your role within education. Thank you, Mark. And thank you, Kathy, for inviting me to the OSBA Forum. I'm also really excited for our conversation together. Uh, as you shared, I'm the executive director of the Ohio School-Based Health Alliance, and I've been in this role for a little over two years now, where I am charged with leading our organization in its support of high quality, sustainable models of school-based healthcare. What that means is that I work very closely with schools and healthcare providers across the state that are partnering together to provide services to students. Prior to my role with the Ohio Alliance, my, the majority of my uh, professional tenure has been with statewide nonprofit organizations where my work focused on health policy and included the exploration of the intersection of health and education and advancing statewide multi-sector initiatives. I've always in my work found some way to connect back to support the overall well-being of our, our diverse communities across Ohio, and especially connecting back to, to kids and Ohio communities that might be at the greatest risk for experiencing poor outcomes. I am a mother of three, and I have a child in three different school buildings, so high school, middle, and elementary, which of course is uh, such a tremendous and very relevant influence on the work that I do. Oh my gosh. Well, welcome, Reem. We love having you, and especially as former educators, yes. we know how important this conversation is. So let's start with this. How does the Ohio School-Based Health Alliance ensure that it meets the diverse health needs of students across both urban and rural areas of Ohio? Let me start by sharing a little bit more about, about the Ohio Alliance. So we are a statewide organization that was created to advance and support the sustainability and expansion of school-based healthcare. And our mission is to improve access to comprehensive integrated health services through school-based healthcare to advance equity and improve health and education outcomes for students, their families, and communities. So as a statewide organization, we really have a broad range of partners that we work with and communities across Ohio that are impacted by our work, both, both urban communities and rural communities. And we work very closely with uh, school districts and healthcare providers to support the setup and expansion of school-based healthcare. So we, we approach our work through capacity building, which includes providing technical assistance, guidance, or other resources to partners, policy transformation, which a uh, fancy way of, of saying advocating on behalf of our school-based healthcare partners, and then building a data infrastructure to strength, strengthen school-based healthcare statewide. So we, we are impacting all parts of the state and have school-based health centers or other school-based healthcare delivery models in all quadrants of the state. So when you look at our state, uh, we have a lot of challenges, but I, what would you say are our biggest challenges within the state in regards to healthcare and how's your organization addressing them? Sure, we, we, we have a lot of challenges, you're right. And especially when we think about health, it really is an important factor that contributes to a child's success both inside and outside of school. So in our work, what we find is that students who are sick or who may have an unaddressed underlying health condition, uh, they often can't focus inside the classroom. They're more likely to miss school altogether and, and their, their education is negatively impacted. And then those, those consequences of not being ready to learn, present in the classroom can really have rippling effects throughout their lifetime. Um, when we look at the data, we know that our students are facing significant both health and education challenges, and those challenges have been uh, exacerbated over the past few years, and particularly by the pandemic. So I, I love the data, and I'll, I'll share some, some data with you. Uh, in, in one of the kind of markers of, of health for our, our children across the state is when we look at their behavioral health issues. And so one in every eight children in Ohio were struggling with depression or anxiety, and that's as of 2020. So we know that that number has only increased. Pre-pandemic data 
has demonstrated that more than 15% of Ohio high school students that were surveyed had seriously considered attempting suicide. And again, those numbers are, are higher today. And then when we look at our education challenges, more than one in four K through 12 students in Ohio were chronically absent in the 2022-2023 school year. So this two school years ago, and, and that means that they're missing more than 10 days of school a year. What we find to really even be more concerning is that many children in our state do not have access to comprehensive and timely healthcare services, the services that they need to improve their health and reduce the obstacles to academic achievement. So when we look at statewide data, one out of every five school aged child does not have a place to go or consult when they're sick. And this lack of access to care is even uh, more abysmal in, in those communities that, that are really um, underserved and, and maybe don't have the same access that we see in other parts of the state. So um, we, we as the Ohio Alliance are lifting up and supporting the setup and expansion of school-based health centers in particular as a model for connecting kids to care. Great, and, and, and Rima answered some of what I'm gonna ask. So how has the opiate crisis and mental health challenges impacted school-based health services and what strategies are being implemented to combat these issues? Sure, so the, the lack of access to care, as I shared in the data, is, is even worse for children seeking behavioral health services. We continue to hear from school leaders across the state that this is a challenge, it's a prevailing issue when they're looking at, at their students and um, what their what their biggest issues or concerns. So the, the the best way that I can share how we tackle this issue is in our support of school based healthcare and uh, school based health centers. And just to, to pause a little bit on what the school based health center is, that's a evidence driven model for advancing school based healthcare in the school setting. Uh, there's these centers that are created through a partnership between a school and typically a community healthcare provider to increase access to at minimum primary healthcare services to students on a school campus. So they are, they are located on the school campus providing services to students. And many of these school-based health centers also extend to behavioral health services and even oral or uh, uh, vision services as well. So they, they integrate services on the school campus for students. The healthcare provider serves as the operator or the administrator of the school-based health center, runs the day-to-day -day operations of the school-based health center, and then works very closely with the school to ensure that student needs are met. And so this is a prime example of how we're, we're addressing the physical and behavioral health challenges that we're seeing coming out of the, the opiate epidemic. Um, at its base, this model removes student and family barriers to accessing care. So just think about a, a working parent um, or, or guardian of, of, of a student that might have uh, uh, difficulty taking time off of work to take a child to see their primary care provider, um, or they may lack transportation, or they may not have a primary care provider to go to. So these models of care really provide health care in a setting that is nurturing for students and enable our students and families to overcome barriers to accessing care. And then when we think about behavioral health services that are provided in this setting. That includes things like screening for, for uh, mental health or behavioral health issues, diagnosis, uh, counseling, and often extends to group or fa family therapy as well. And, and then the other thing that I would share is that these, these models have an impact also on the various factors that, uh, that really contribute to poor mental health outcomes. So. Um, we know that if a, if a student is facing a mental health crisis, they're likely to miss school. And so if you're, if you're able to diagnose and treat a child who is experiencing a mental health challenge, then that means that they're going to be ready to be um, in the classroom and, and able to learn. Uh, and, then, and then also we see it tied to disciplinary action that a student might face, resulting from maybe a behavioral health issue that they have. Um, so the, the more access to treatment that we have, the more likely these, these kiddos are going to be able to, to really be set up for success in a school setting. That's great. So one of the things that we like to do on the forum, Reem, is make sure that we give some takeaways to our members. So if a district reached out to you and said, hey, 
give us two or three things that you know in most cases are really going to impact um, your programs and, and impact the student well-being and academic performance of your kiddos. What would you recommend? That's great. So I, I think that thinking about uh, the needs of the students first and foremost. So one of the things that we recommend doing is conducting a needs assessment and gathering information, engaging the community, engaging students and families to have a better understanding of what the needs are at that school district level. So that's the step one. And then once those needs are identified, uh, looking at the data and, and determining whether or not a school-based health center, some other school-based healthcare delivery model might make most sense uh, to, to set up in the school and to meet those kiddos' needs. Um, and then the step three would be moving forward on a, a planning process for setting up a school-based healthcare delivery model. Of course, we know that that um, there are many professionals within the school setting that are employed by the school, like the school nurse, that have a tremendous impact on the health and well-being of students. And these models of care are not intended to, to duplicate or replace those services that are provided in school, but, but there are supports, broader supports for school systems and school districts in meeting the needs of their students in, in ways that um, really provide more comprehensive and broader, broader reach of care. And so, Reem, of course, um, you were talking about taking away the barriers in regards to our uh, students and families. And a lot of times we're having to advocate to make sure those barriers are removed. Right now, just share with us what you're advocating for from the school-based Health Alliance perspective to make sure that our kiddos have our opportunity to get the wellness supports they need. Funding is, is one of the biggest barriers that we hear from our school partners and our healthcare provider partners that are really interested in setting up strong school-based healthcare infrastructure. Um, so we, we would advocate for increased funding to create, support, and expand the reach of school-based health centers and other innovative school-based healthcare de delivery models across our state. We're very fortunate to have a governor and legislature that have been very supportive of school-based health centers. And for the first time ever in our last state budget, there was actually $15 million allocated to school-based health centers. And there's been funding uh, through Appalachian Community Grants and various other opportunities. Um, as of the 2023 to 2024 school year, there were uh, only 74 school districts in our state that were served by school-based health centers. And we know that that's a model that does not make sense in every school district, but we have 600 plus school districts across the state and know that there are many, many school communities that could benefit from expansion of this model and are just um, are stuck on the funding as a barrier to doing that. And then the, the other uh, advocacy lens that we take is the incentivization of partnership between the school, community health care providers, and, and the community to increase access to physical and behavioral health services. So that, that means aligning incentives, making sure that there are clear communication pathways between partners, uh, because we're, we're essentially taking two of the most complex systems, so arguably healthcare and education, and, and trying to partner them together. And so there can be some barriers in in kind of the translation of those of those services. So aligning incentives across schools and healthcare providers to ensure that we're supporting school-based healthcare is, is something that we'd like to see. Well, Reem, as you look at the next five to 10 years, obviously we're dealing with an evolution in the integration of uh, technology and telemedicine within this space. So what, what do you see the evolution of, F, of healthcare, particularly from the School-Based Health Alliance with that integration coming forward? Sure. So I think, um, as I shared, expanding that footprint of school-based health centers in our state can be really game changers when we think about school-based health care and the evolution of school-based health care. So additional startup funding for and for capital funding for, for that. Um, I think also thinking about uh, more clearly defined pathways for sustainability of these school-based health care models and um, refining how we are thinking about these other innovative models of care. So for example, leveraging telehealth to expand services to students, um, connecting kids to needed specialists or acute care. Um, all of these things are, are things that we'd hope for in five to 10 years from now. 
although we've had school-based health centers operating in our, in our state for decades, we still have what we would call kind of a, a, a nascent infrastructure. Um, and so, so we would love to see more, more strength in infrastructure, stronger network of school-based healthcare partners across the state, and a stronger data infrastructure. So we can, we can start to track outcomes uh, that we're seeing and track utilization, which right now we, we can't do that on a statewide level in a really comprehensive way. So as our time together comes to an end, unfortunately, Rian, if there's one thing you would love our audience to take away, what would that one thing be? I would just emphasize the value of school-based health centers and the support they provide for students and the broader school community. These models of school-based healthcare really work. They ensure our kids are getting access to the healthcare services that they need. Uh, they often also provide connection to healthcare for families of students or school staff and personnel or the broader community. So many of our school-based health center sites, and there's 135 um, that were operating in the last school year, they serve not only students, but they also serve the broader community. And so these are these are wonderful supports for, for our communities to ensure that kiddos are in the classroom and ready to learn. They also allow our school teams to be focused on teaching our kids and um, combat some of the challenges that might be seen in the classroom, um, whether it be attendance or the focus of, of kids. So help help it helps to support our our um, school, school staff and school uh, personnel in, in doing the work that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's, that would be the takeaway that I would have is just really emphasizing the value of these models and supporting, supporting students. Great. Reem, thank you for being with us today and your continued advocacy on behalf of our students and the difference that you're making uh, within our schools. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you to our membership for your leadership and dedication to your community. If there's any way that our OSBA team can help you, please contact us. We are here as a resource to you. Have a wonderful day and thank you for being here at the OSBA Forum. <laughs>